Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we are taking a look at yet more new teasers for Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. It seems in the run up to launch, Mob Entertainment are really trying to drum up anticipation and hype via their ARG website over at playtimeco.org. The website's just updated again, giving us both a sneak peek at some new locations and characters from the upcoming chapter via the CCTV network feeds, and a continuation of the mysterious story of Theodore Grendel, the escapee child who befell a terrible fate and may well have been used in the catnap experiment to bring the smiling critter to life via the Bigger Bodies initiative. Over the course of this video, I'll be taking a look at all of this new information to catch you up to date with everything. So sit back, relax, and let's begin with a look at the new CCTV footage. On the desktop of Head of Innovation Life Pierre is an application for the CCTV or security camera systems found throughout Playtime Co. By opening up this app, we are able to look at various camera feeds featuring a selection of familiar locations from past chapters. For example, here you can see the Game Station area, and here the area where Mommy Longlegs met a sticky end before being claimed by the prototype. Yesterday, these cameras updated with three new viewpoints, all using locations we have yet to visit. No doubt places we are about to visit as we journey into the playcare in Chapter 3. The first of these new areas seems to be set in a factory, and we can see pistons stamping up and down. You may remember a few months ago we analysed a selection of Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 screenshots, and one of these was set in a factory just like this one. In fact, it looks like the very same area, don't you think? At the time, I speculated that this was to be an area with moving pistons used to crush down waste, and it seems that this speculation has been proven correct. In fact, this area is also very reminiscent of the Destroyer toy map seen in Project Playtime, so maybe that location and this one are one and the same. The second camera feed shows off an eerie hallway full of jail cells. Again, we have seen a glimpse of this area in a previous teaser, for which I did an in-depth analysis at the time. I theorised that this is where the naughty children who misbehaved and tried to escape were held by playtime scientists. Or could it be that this is where those who were experimented on were locked away, so not to tip off the other orphans and send them into a state of panic? Whatever these cells were used for, it was no doubt something highly questionable and unethical. We see one door has been ripped off the hinges, and another is wide open. Did someone or something save whomever was locked away inside? Scratch marks across the floor suggest that this may have been the work of new antagonist Catnap, but perhaps this could also have been the work of the prototype, whose signature moveset also utilises pin sharp claws. In the bottom right corner we can see a pile of torn up toys. These are all gathered around a jail cell door, leaving us to ponder the question, was the prisoner kept inside this cell, feeding on them? If we hang on this camera for several minutes, we eventually witness an eerie sight indeed. A small teddy bear wandering the halls. The teddy stumbles forward before entering the cell to the left. Is this where the smiling critters were being held? It is also worth noting that one of the smiling critters was a bear named Bobby Bearhug a friendly and lovable creature who enriched other people's lives with her love and affection. So this could mean that if we encounter Bobby in Chapter 3, she will be a friendly character rather than a hostile one. But we'll have to wait and see. The final camera feed is based within the Home Sweet Home orphanage. In a room very similar to the one teased in this screenshot, it seems to be a dorm room where the children would play and eventually sleep by night. Of course the most obvious and terrifying inclusion within this security feed comes with the already iconic smiling face and those piercing eyes. This is Catnap, and he seems to be stretching all of the way from the floor to the ceiling and staring directly into the CCTV camera, almost as if he is aware we are watching. This is our first real look at Catnap outside of glimpses in the previous trailer. While he is still hard to make out in the darkness, this gives us some idea of how he will appear during gameplay, 
lurking in the shadows, silently waiting to pounce. We've taken a look at the latest CCTV footage, so now let's move over to the ARG itself. Within the folder for experiment 1188, aka catnap, there has been made an addendum. This additional file contains notes from an investigation conducted by Gerard Lockhart, carried out in the wake of the horrifying accident that befell seven-year-old Theodore Grendel. If you would like more information on the story of Theo up to this point, then check out this video where we go over that portion of the ARG. I'm going to read through these investigation notes and then briefly summarise and give my thoughts at the end. To whom this may concern? Rumour has it whatever it was that influenced poor Theodore, be it human or beastly in nature, as a witness described it, has been apprehended in the lower dredges of the facility. I'm sure this news is pleasing to you, should it be true, and I hope it is true. Don't worry, I'll only dig so far as directed. Regardless, I wish to add my two cents together on the details I uncovered in my investigations, and hopefully, together, we can paint a clearer picture of the situation and why it happened. I've got my theory though. Blunt honesty, I've never encountered a case so strange as this, and yet, it's oddly simple. The Preamble Reports and first-hand accounts state that Theodore Gramble is odd, antisocial tendencies with other children, juvenile behaviour, peculiar relationship with an imaginary friend. Equipment was missing, reported by Mark Smith, the maintenance technician. Two grab packs and two green hand attachments. Little to go on, and a lot to learn. They were left outside a small charged gate. To open, two charges have to be linked to the same circuit, hence the need for a second somebody. Before, I spoke to the engineers regarding the green hand design, intention, capabilities, and any issues they may have had. It turns out the last bit would be important. Service access. The path leads out of Playcare via a service access tunnel, kept as an emergency exit route following construction. Tracks in the ground, traces of tar, stops just past the opening of a tunnel. Whatever was with Theo, it managed to get access but didn't use the exit route. These tracks are not that of a man, but something else. I scoffed at the witness who said the thing was beastly. Just another lapse in recall. Update. Grab pack 2. Discarded. Tossed. To go back for the boy? Perhaps some secondary security measure kicked in and scared the thing. Nope. Nada. No alarms. No cameras. No security alerts. Nothing. If the intention is a clean getaway, you can't get better than that. So, why go back? A rock and a hard place, Mr. Mystery Influencer? My conclusion. Whatever your influencer is, it wanted a way out. What's strange, it got just that, but it didn't take it. Instead, it chose to carry the boy to staff to save him and blew its own cover. Had it not intervened though, the boy likely wouldn't have made it. Whatever or whoever this was, perhaps it cared in its own way. Doesn't excuse what happened, obviously, but still. Be grateful that it means Theodore is alive to tell. Yours, Gerard Lockhart, Investigator. From this information, we are told that Theodore, under the influence of a prototype Experiment 1006, stole two grab packs. One of these packs was given to the prototype, who then led the boy to a service tunnel which led out of the facility. The service tunnel needed two people to power up the gate, each one using a green grab pack with an electric hand. While powering up the gate, Theodore accidentally shocked himself and ended up in a critical condition. Rather than escaping, it seems the prototype rescued Theo and brought him back to the playtime scientists, despite this causing its escape plan to fail. It seems the prototype really did care about Theo, and the escape plan may have been intended to save him as much as to enable Experiment 1006 to escape itself. If this speculation is correct, then it almost certainly confirms our previous theory, that the prototype is none other than Elliot Ludwig, founder of Playtime Co. Elliot always had a great love for children, and wanted nothing more than to bring them joy and happiness. Elliot seemingly volunteered himself to be one of the first living toy experiments, 
in a desperate bid to resurrect his lost daughter, who we theorise is now living inside Poppy herself. However, the new management at Playtime Co. began experimenting on orphan children in horrifying ways, their endgame to create living toys that could interact with children on a whole new level and be the next major innovation to come from Playtime. Elliot, seeing how his life's work was now being twisted to harm the children he once so loved, is on a mission to save them, as well as destroy those pesky Playtime employees who caused them harm. Or at least, that's my current read on the story. We're still missing many pieces of the overall puzzle. If the prototype is Elliot Ludwig, and his mission is to save the children who fell victim to Playtime Co's twisted experiments, then it also makes sense why he collects up the body of Mommy Longlegs at the end of Chapter 2. Mommy contains the consciousness of child Marie Payne, so by claiming her, the prototype is trying to fix the broken toy, even if that means making her part of him in the process. Ultimately, the prototype may be a force of good rather than evil, at least if you're a child. Finally, we have a cross-department report submitted by three different Playtime staff members. This report talks in detail about Experiment 1188, Catnap, and his integration into the Playcare. As we read this report, keep in mind that Catnap almost certainly contains the consciousness of Theodore Grendel, after he befell that tragic accident. Cross Department Report, in relation, 1188. Date, 20th of February, 1991. Dr. Harley Sawyer, on behalf of research. It has been three months since 1188's procedure and one month since his introduction to the play care. I'm pleased to say he's taken to his tasks like a fish to water, meeting virtually every one of his objectives we set out for him. The initial procedure had its challenges, taking four hours longer than we had hoped, followed by a rather tumultuous adjustment period. Still, his mental test metrics were virtually unchanged from pre-op. Now he's on the job, as it were, and we can say for certain that the outcome has been a resounding success, rivaling that of even 1170. Stella Graeber, on behalf of Playcare. When the child first saw the bigger body's catnap, half of them were terrified. More than one burst into tears. I can't say I didn't expect this. The other department heads will note that I was never a fan of using 1188 in Playcare for this exact reason. The good news is that, in the time since, many of the children have warmed to him. Some of them even consider him a friend now. He's gentle, even a bit shy, and I think the kids find that endearing. The ones still wary of him at least now accept his presence without fuss. I still have reservations about how he is used, but I admit his overall impact on the playcare operations has been a positive one. Leif Pierre, on behalf of Innovation. 1188 has calmed down a lot in recent weeks. There were issues regarding erratic behaviour after the experiment, but those seem to have been all ironed out, and Catnap has been integrated into playcare without much issue. That's not to say I still don't have concerns. The relationship between 1188 and 1006 could pose a problem, at least somewhere down the line. Any time the two are in a room together, 1188 follows 1006 around like a lost puppy. It's an odd sight, and what's more, 1006 doesn't seem to mind, or if he does, he's not showing it. If I remember correctly, Lockhart had some theories on the matter back in 89, but I'm not convinced of anything either way. What I know is this. Catnap may be docile now, but he's also highly impressionable, especially to anything the prototype says or does. I worry how quickly his behaviour could change depending on the whims of that temperamental thing. From this information we can see that the prototype seems to have been integrated alongside the other toys in day-to-day -day life, something I wasn't expecting to personally read, meaning that the prototype may have been some kind of aid to the other Bigger Bodies Initiative toys and used to influence them and help them adjust to their new forms. But what do you make of all of this new information? There's certainly a lot to go over, but for now I think this is where I'm going to wrap up today's video. Let me know what your thoughts and theories are in the comments section below, and of course if you enjoyed this video remember to leave a like and subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.